Of all the things that changed my life for the better most quickly, it was learning how to set goals. And mastering this unique process can have a powerful effect on your life too. One morning at breakfast, shortly after I met Mr. Shelf, he asked me if he could see my current list of goals. He said, let me see your list of goals and let's go over them and talk about them. Maybe that's the best way I can help you right now. And I said, I don't have a list. He said, well, is it out in the car or at home somewhere? I said, no, sir. I don't have a list anywhere. He said, well, young man, that's where we better start. Then he added, if you don't have a list of your goals, I can guess your bank balance within a few hundred dollars, which he did. And that got my attention. I said, you mean that if I had a list of goals, that would change my bank balance? He said, drastically. That day I became a student of how to set goals. And sure enough, when I learned how, my whole life changed. My income, my bank account, my personality, my lifestyle, my accomplishments. So I'd like to share with you the best I have learned and practiced on goal setting. First of all, I'd like to say that we are all affected by five factors. The first is environment. The second is events. The third is knowledge. The fourth is results. And the fifth and often overlooked factor that affects our lives is our view of the future. Our dreams. I won't get into all of these influences here, but let me concentrate on the fifth one. Dreams. Of all these five influences, make sure your dreams are the greatest influence on your daily decisions and activities. Put another way, make sure that the greatest pull on you is the pull of the future. For your dreams to greatly influence you, for the future to pull you, your future must be well planned. There are two ways to face the future. One is with apprehension, the other with anticipation. Guess how many people face the future with apprehension? Why? They don't have it well designed. And without really thinking about it, they have probably bought someone else's view of how to live. You will face the future with anticipation when you have planned a future you can get excited about. When you have designed your future results in advance. In this way, the future will capture your imagination. It will exert an enormous influence on you. And to design your future, you must have goals. Well-defined goals are like a magnet. They pull you in their direction. And the better you have defined them, the better you have described them, the harder you work on them, the stronger they pull. And they pull you through all kinds of difficulties too. Without goals, it is easy to let life deteriorate to the point where you're just making a living. It is not difficult to get trapped by economic necessity and settle for existence rather than substance. We all have a choice. We can either make a living or design a life. Mr. Shove said to me, I don't think your current bank balance is a true indicator of your level of intelligence. I was happy to hear that. He said, I think you have plenty of talent and ability and that you're much smarter than your bank balance indicates. And that turned out to be true. I was much smarter. My question to him was, then why isn't my bank balance bigger? And he said, you don't have enough reasons for accomplishing great things. If you had enough reasons, you could do incredible things. You have enough intelligence, but not enough reasons. That's the key, if you had enough reasons. In my years of study, I've also discovered this. Reasons come first, and answers come second. Life has a strange way of hiding all the answers and disclosing them only to people who have been inspired to look for them, who have reasons to look for them. Put another way, when you know what you want, and you want it badly enough, you will find ways to get it. The answers, the methods, the solutions will become evident to you. Hey, what if you had to be rich? Are there any books and tapes on the subject? The answer is yes. There are plenty of good ones. But if you don't have to be rich, 
you probably won't read the books or listen to the tapes. What drives us to find the answers is necessity. So work on your reasons first, answer second. Now, what are some of the reasons for doing well? It varies from person to person. I'm sure that if you did a little soul searching, you could come up with a fairly strong list of reasons why you want to accomplish great things. There are personal reasons, sometimes uniquely personal reasons. Some people do well for the recognition. Some do well because of the way it makes them feel. They love the feeling of being a winner. That's one of the best reasons. I have some millionaire friends who keep working 10 to 12 hours a day making more millions. And it's not because they need the money. It's because of the joy, pleasure, and satisfaction that come to them from being constant winners. To them, money is not their main drive. It's not the money. It's the journey. Once in a while, someone says to me, if I had a million dollars, I'd never work another day in my life. Hey, that's probably why the good Lord sees to it that he doesn't get his million. Because he'd just quit. Family is another reason or motivator for doing well. Some people do extremely well because of other people. And that's a powerful reason. Sometimes we will do things for someone else that we would not do for ourselves. We are made that way. I met a man who once said to me, Mr. Rohn, to do everything I want to do around the world with my family, I need at least a quarter of a million dollars a year. I thought, incredible. Could a man's family affect him that much? And the answer is, of course. How fortunate are the people who find themselves greatly affected by someone else? It's powerful. Benevolence. The desire to share can be a powerful reason for wanting to achieve. Some people do extremely well gathering up resources, so they can then be benefactors. When Andrew Carnegie, the great steel magnet, died, his desk was opened, and in one of the desk drawers was found a slip of paper. On that slip of paper, Mr. Carnegie had written his goal for his life, and he wrote it when he was in his 20s. On that slip of paper, he had written... I'm going to spend the first half of my life accumulating money. I'm going to spend the last half of my life giving it all away. That's terrific. He was so inspired by that goal that during the first half of his life, he accumulated $450 million. And during the last half of his life, he gave it all away. How powerful. What has you turned on? What has you getting up early, hitting it hard all day and staying up late? What has you inspired? Next question. What's got you turned off? When I found the answers to those two questions, my life exploded into change. I finally found out what negative philosophy of life I had allowed to limit me and had me turned off. And I got that cured. Then I found a long enough list of reasons to turn me on. And once the lights went on for me, at age 25, they have never gone out. I've fallen out of the sky a few times, but I've never lost that drive to do something unique with my life. Now there's another list of reasons for doing well called Nitty Gritty. Those hard little reasons that can really affect your life. Sometimes it doesn't take much of a goal to start you in a brand new life direction. I now carry a few hundred dollars in my money 